Hi, it's Andy again, and I have another tutorial for you today um, on parse.com. Uh, in the last tutorial, I talked to you about uh, adding a parse login um, UI. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about using parse.com as your uh, backend database. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons why you would use a company like Parse to use a for your back end is uh, if you have some data that you want to share with your users that um, you really don't know anything about online databases and that would be me <laughs> um, actually it's very easy if you can use Excel um, you can definitely use the, the you know the plug-and-play uh, database for um, for parse.com it's pretty simple uh, in this tutorial that I'm going to do today, we're going to uh, make a list of pets, uh, and these are our pets that I've had. Um, Gabby is my current pet that's uh, sticking her butt in my face as I write, uh, as I talk it in this uh, video. So, uh, you know, uh, first of all, you got to decide what type of data are you going to be presenting to your users. So, in this case. Um, I'm going to be presenting the, the pet's name and what type of pet they were. So whether it was a, a dog, a cat, or a fish in this, uh, in this case. So uh, um, we're, we're going to need to pull those two things, and they're both strings. Now, if we wanted to add, uh, let's say, a picture, uh, we could totally do that. We'll add, um, we would add a column. We would select the type for a picture. You can see that there's no like photo on here. Um, that's because you would just use the file, and uh, we'll just name this uh, pet photo, and then uh, it gets added here at the end. Um, we'll use this in a later tutorial. We're gonna take this very crappy looking app, and uh, we'll make it somewhat, you know, pretty and functional. So. Um, uh, for the moment, you know, we're just going to grab these two strings here, though, the, the pet name and their type. Uh, it's really easy to create a new class, you know, just like adding a, a column or a row. Uh, you would just, um, these are the ones that are defined for you. You have user installation, role, and product. Um, user installation and role are already built for you. I deleted the role for now um, because it's not going to be useful in our sample apps. Um, you would use roles to uh, really give um, different levels of control over an app. So like in a system administrator or something like that would ha be a role. A user would be another role. Uh, and you can use these roles to, you know, um, give permissions to what can and can't be edited throughout an app. Um, users, just all of the users. Um, installations are all the devices that are there. And product, um, product is like when you add it, it says that it's a special class that um, you store your in-app product data. Um, we won't be going over that. So you can create as many regular classes as you want. Just use the custom one and then set it to your liking. What do you need? Do you need a location? You can put a, a lat latitude and longitude so you can use that in, let's say, a Google map. Um, you can use uh, strings for like phone numbers, you know, whatever, photos. Um, you know, pretty much if you need to store something, uh, there's a, a parse subclass for it, you know, uh, dates integers um, or sorry numbers is what they call it um, uh, you know lots of different uh, you know um, t types of data that you can store you can store an array um, relation you can relate uh, things from one um, from one table to another Okay, so let's get on to the app. What do we need to do? All right, 
Well, we've made this class pets here. So let's uh, actually get our getters and setters into our code. So we'll do that first. Um, so here it is. It's going to look a little weird because um, usually you would, you know, uh, you know, define your strings that you can um, put as your uh, getters and setters here. What we're actually going to do is we're extending a parse object here. So these are all going to be uh, the, the get string. It relates to a parse object, get string method. So um, and we're this is going to be your table name. So uh, for the pets, if you go back here, this column name it has to match exactly with this, and same with the type. So for our uh, for our name, our getter for the name, we need to get the string that's in the column name. So same with the type. And uh, for the setter, uh, it's pretty simple. We're just going to be putting the name inside the table where the name is and uh, same for the type. Uh, we're not going to be using the setter today. Um, this would be used if you need to add new pets from your own user interface on the app, let's say. Uh, and then this is, um, you know, I'm not building a custom layout for the list view. So um, I want to show you that I, you can put both of them on there. So uh, the first thing that's going to be is the pet's name. Then there's going to be a new line and then the, the type. So this is going to be pretty ugly looking since we're not uh, spacing things out properly. We're not using the, you know, the two lines in the list view. I'm just... This is the one line, same text, same everything. It's going to look ugly, I promise. Um, but it's just to show you the data for now. Now, next thing you need to do is you need to register. Oh, you know what? I left out a very important thing right here. Your parse class name right here. This is actually very important. Um, this is going to be what you're, refer what you're telling uh, the SDK specifically, what table you're um, you're saying that this uh, parse object refers to. So that'll be pets. So you can see that we've named this pets. You want, this has to match exactly with your table. So that um, when your app is first created, it'll create this object um, and it knows to reference this, uh, this specific class. So um, like I said, when you, when you're first installing it, it gets registered. So how do we do that? Real easy. We need to register our parse object and register subclass and then the pets.class. That's it. But you need to make sure that you put it uh, there. I'm going to try to uh, block that out. So uh, you'll need to put that there. Um, right before you initialize the app. All right. So parse object register subclass pets.class. All right. Next, uh, we're going to actually build our parse query and then uh, set our the data into our list view. So real easily, we're going to just create an activity. It's going to be a list activity. Um, we need to store our uh, list into an array list. So this is our array list pets. Um, it's going to be a new array list. You have to initialize it before you do anything to it or else you'll get all kinds of errors like I got last night because I wasn't paying attention. So um, yes, make sure you just create a new uh, list that we're going to be adding things to. So parse query and um, we're going to be using our object that a parse object that we're uh, we need to grab from the server uh, we're going to query the server uh, just saying it's a new parse query and we're pulling the table pets uh, we need to find in the background and uh, what this does is it frees up our UI thread automatically for us so we don't have to worry about you know the laggy um, jittery UI that 
you know, processing data from a server will do. So um, they, they make it nice. They, they do all this for us, uh, the find in background. Um, so we need to find a call, a uh, new find callback. Remember, we're passing in our objects. So we need to grab this. Um, and then the, the method that gets called is um, done. So when we're, once we're done, we need to do something with the list that's uh, pulled from the server. Uh, so uh, you may throw an exception. So like if you have no network, you're going to throw a parse exception. So let's actually fix this right now. Um, if uh, E does not equal null, we'll catch our error right here. So um, print, uh, or sorry, uh, toast, make text, uh, parse, list activity dot class, oh, sorry, this uh, error, we'll get our error. So we're going to catch our error. Um, uh, if we don't have an error, we'll do. We're going to actually register our uh, pets. So for each pet that the list returns, so that's what this statement is saying. For each pet that the list returns, we're going to create a new pet, and we're going to grab from the server um, the pet name and we're going to register that to the pet's actual name and the same for the type and then we need to tell our list to add the new pet alright so once we have all of our pets done uh, we need to put it into our adapter so we need to create a new adapter and uh, we're passing into the adapter pets um, okay so we're creating a new adapter um, this is our context. I'm just using the simple, uh, oops, I didn't even realize I picked expandable. Simple list item one. And uh, we need to pass in our list, so pets. And uh, we need to set in our list adapter. Okay, now this will be very uh, simple and basic. Um, it's gonna look pretty ugly, so let's run that. And there you go. So we have our pet name and what type of pet they were, and it's all pulled from the server. Now this happens pretty quickly um, because this is very little data. Um, uh, we're gonna actually, in the future episode, we're gonna use a parse query adapter. Um, we're gonna upload pictures for all these uh, pets, and we're gonna create little list view for all of them with a nice little um, uh, picture and, uh, and name. So these will be our pet name list um, or our pet contacts. There we go. So that's uh, a brief tutorial on uh, how to use the parse query and uh, adding items to your online database on parse.com. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, don't use this method as a, a final method. Um, this is just to build it to, to show you that something's actually getting pulled from the server. So uh, in a future episodes, we're going to actually clean this up and properly download the data. And uh, all right, so have a good day.